if you're on a raised foundation, when was the last time you were under your house? <laughs> I've owned my house for 20 years. I think I was under it when we remodeled 13 years ago with the contractor looking at some things. Yeah. Other than that, I'm nervous. So I don't know. I might have 12 leaks going on in there right now. It's like, whew, you know, hope, hope not. Home inspection versus home appraisal. Agent B, break it down. Tell us what is a home inspection? Home well, inspector. I mean, a home inspection is going to be the full physical inspection on a property. So like you can even have it on the pool and the mm. pool equipment, all those type of things. But the home inspection is an actual, even, even though it's a, uh, an inspector and has his own opinions, those type of things, it's really an objective or report on the property to where they're gonna look at everything from under the house all the way to the roof and everything in between. And so they're gonna let you know if any of the systems are failing or they're older, if your electricity is grounded or not, if things aren't working, they're gonna run the dishwashers, they're gonna do, I mean, they're gonna check into the house and see if you have leaks, all different kinds of stuff. So it's things you can physically see on the house that maybe you wouldn't be able to know about unless you pay for that inspection to be done. Super okay. important. And they give you a giant list? Well, yeah, I mean, most, most reports, I mean, Today, like I'm, on my house, this is built in 1956, I think. And so this house is probably going to generate a 60 page report. You know, I mean, they're going to list everything. Even if stuff is in good condition, they'll let you know. But I mean, they'll list like the smallest little crack on the ground or they'll let you know where every single thing is. You know, all the, all the skeletons in the closet come out on that one. And the home appraisal, what does the appraiser look at? Well, I mean, the home appraisal, I mean, so this is where you get kind of into a gray area because the appraisal is really a subjective report. And, you know, I tell people this all the time. I can bring three appraisers to my house tomorrow and all three are going to give me probably a different number unless they have it on the paper, unless they have it on the contract. A lot of them will have it on the contract. A lot of them, I hate to say, a lot of appraisers are trying to hit that number. So they said, hey, my house is worth 950. They're going to try to get to 950. Mm -hmm. But if you give them just a blind hey, here's a house, let me know what it's worth. They're gonna have to do a lot more work to do it. But they're gonna come in, they're gonna measure the house usually with a laser or some of the old school guys pull out the tape measure um, just to verify the square footage. You know, they're gonna look for any kind of upgrades and maybe ask those questions. Hey, when was this pool put in? When was your kitchen remodel? When was a bathroom remodel? To kind of be able to try to add value there if they can. When were these windows done? Those type of things. So they're gonna just see what they can see, but they don't go into the house to see leaks. They don't open up the electrical panel to see if there's problems in there. You know, they don't go up on the roof and see what kind of condition the roof is. And they might ask you what the age of it is, um, but they don't see all those little things that an inspector can see. So really they're gonna give you a value based on a subjective report. And then you kind of run with it and hope that, you know, that's what you're gonna get, or maybe you're gonna get more or less, I'm not sure. What's the reasoning behind that? Like, why don't they do that? They just- It's, it's the for roof. your loan. So the lender's not going to require, you know, all these things to be fixed unless it's an FHA loan or a VA loan. Sometimes they require certain things to be fixed, but even then they might walk around a house and go, oh, there's chipping paint and that type of stuff that needs to be done prior to close of escrow. But they just don't get into a full appraisal because a, or a full inspection because that's not what a lender is going to require of them to do. They're trying to turn and burn them, especially in this market. <laughs> got it. Got it. Okay. So for inspections, when should you get an inspection as a seller? Well, as a seller, I mean, you're not required to do the inspection, but I do have sellers that get a pre-listing inspection done sometimes. So they know what to fix ahead of time, maybe to help lessen the damage or what are some bigger items maybe they're gonna need to do. Um, I just closed on a property about a month ago in Placentia where they got a full inspection done last year, in like November, and then they went in and knocked out almost every single thing on there. So then when that next, when they got, when the buyers of their place got the inspection done, the report was like 20 pages long. So yeah. it was just like, so it was really nothing. It was like maybe four or five things that needed to be done. And so they gave them like a $500 credit at close and move on because everything else was taken care of ahead of time. Nice. So it just presented the home as just perfect. And a lot of the things that needed to be fixed were cosmetics, so no problem. And when should you get an inspection as a buyer? Well, I mean, you should get it right away, you know? And I mean, some buyers are even starting to waive inspection contingencies these days, which I never suggest. What does that mean? Well, that means that they don't, to get the house or to buy the house, they're telling the seller they don't need, to, they don't need an inspection. So the seller, they're like, great, you're not gonna ask for any repairs at all. Because remember, everything in California is sold as is. Even if it's sold as is, you could still ask for repairs. And so, you know, they could, the seller could say no, but you want to get that inspection done right away so you have time to look at your report along with all the other disclosures you're going to get and see if it's something you want to move forward with. Because, yeah, if you got all the plumbing under the house is leaking, there's a flood under there and the seller may not know about it because, I mean, if you're on a raised foundation, when was the last time you were under your house? <laughs> I've owned my house for 20 years. I think I was under it 
when we remodeled 13 years ago with the contractor looking at some things. Yeah. Other than that, I'm nervous. So I don't know. I might have 12 leaks going on in there right now. It's like, whew, you know, hope, hope not. But you want to get that done to see if the value of the house is there for you or what you're going to have to fix when you close. As a buyer. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, when should, so when should I get an appraisal uh, as a seller? Well, I mean, you don't have to, obviously, you know, I mean, because that's my job mm -hmm. is to come in and give you comps and tell her what your house is worth and, and those type of things and run the CMA, the comparable market analysis and let you know what it's worth. You can definitely get an appraisal done. But like I said, we can bring three appraisers out here and they're going to give you three different prices. Mm. So that, that never, the appraisal never means that's where the price is going to land or where mm. it's going to close escrow at because it could be people that offer more, people that offer less. Yeah. The inspections may affect, you know, affect that with credits, different things. So you can definitely do an appraisal if you really want one, but I tell people we can do it, but it's going to cost you 400 bucks, mm. 450 bucks to get an appraisal. That's more than happy to do it, but that doesn't mean what you're selling your house for. Right. That's what sellers have to understand too, because they'll have their house appraised and it comes in at 850,000. They're like, well, I'm, I'm not selling my house for anything less than 850,000. Hmm. Maybe the appraiser was super generous with it and it may not hit that, or maybe it's going to go way above that. So it's just an appraiser like, man, it's a subjective report. So it's just, it's, it's not concrete. It could, it could, your house could land anywhere, even with that appraisal. Interesting. And when should I get an appraisal as a, as a buyer? Well, again, I mean, in this market, people are waiving appraisals right now. Um, but if they're getting a loan, they still have to get it. And so usually the lender is going to order that within 72 to four, or 72 to 96 hours or so. And then it usually takes a few days to get it back. So you're probably going to get an appraisal report back within seven to 10 days. And that's going to tell the lender what the house is worth. And so let's say you're buying a house at 800,000, but the appraisal comes in at 780. If you remove your appraisal contingency, you got to come in with 20 grand more to get your loan. Cash. But if it comes, yeah, it's cold <laughs> cash, buddy. But if it comes in 820, you do, you now have $20,000 extra equity in your house. And the seller can't come back to you and say, hey, I want more money. It's not mm. going to happen. What are some common misconceptions? Um, I think. Well, I mean, like, like yeah. I said before, you know, people actually believe that the appraisal is the value of their house. And the, mar the market's going to tell you the value of your house. Waiving that appraisal contingency is going to win you the offer. It's not always going to do that, you know. It's, it just doesn't always happen. But just, just understand that, I mean, I think the biggest thing is just thinking that appraisal is it. And it's definitely not. I mean, that's the biggest misconception of all of it. Yeah, like that's exactly what my house is worth. Yeah, that's not. Yeah. It's not. It depends on so many other factors. For sure. Cool. Yeah. Agent B, thanks. Get it done. You know, that's all I can say. Till next time. That's it? That's it. All right, man. See, See ya. ya. Why are you still here? I mean, I guess you must have loved that video. So if you did, look over there, click right over there, over there, and check the next one out. Maybe, maybe it's just as good. You never know. All right, that's it. Gotta go. See ya.